Wrestling's bloodiest wars continues to push the envelope when it comes to ultraviolence. Men from around the world compete for pride as they perform insane acts of violence onto others and themselves. They never know exactly when their sentencing day is. It could be today. Wrestling's bloodiest wars now play. Wrestling bloodiest wars. We welcome you to Sentencing Day. My name is Joe Dombrowski. I will be your host for a look at the most chaotic, the most violent, the most brutal combat sports footage you will find anywhere. You are taking a close look right now at Dave Crist, one of the charter members of OI4K Ohio is for Killer. Dave Crist is accompanied to the ring by Zachary Wentz, one of the uh, young men studying under Dave Crist, Dave's hometown of Dayton, Ohio. So good he's got his own pitch, man, but talk about somebody that's good. Somebody that's uh, better than good. That's both these athletes. David Starr. And you can see that there are heated issues between David Starr and Dave Chris that predate this encounter. But there will be no disqualification. Look at that. Look at this. David Starr being jumped from behind. No disqualification, falls count anywhere as Dave Crist had some backup waiting in the wings. Ouch. Will it deter David Starr going onward here? Star sets Crist across the, uh, the floor here into the big side guardrails. And Chris firing back in kind. And you can just hear the impact of body and bone on steel. You can hear it even more. Both these men are incredibly talented athletes. They can go bell to bell any style, but this is more about a fight. Dave Chris has already proven between JT Davidson and Zachary Wentz. I believe it was pretty play. Oh, God! Dave Chris could not prepare for what took place on that exchange. Head over heels, back first on the steel chair, and David Starr is looking for perhaps an equalizer. David Starr has found a solid steel guardrail. Under a normal wrestling match, I would talk right now about David Starr's amateur background, his success all over the world, but that doesn't matter here. 
Chris kicks the guardrail right to the sternum of David Starr. And this one of the most evenly matched rivalries anywhere in sports of the past several years. These men have met, these men have made history before. They competed in a match once upon a time, went 104 minutes. And with the brutality we've seen in this matchup, I don't think it'll take that long to determine a winner here, but it could go either way. It's a pick -em. And David Starr waiting in the wing. The thrust kick. Dave Christ is Dave. Every strike, every bit of contact. Getting the most out of everything. And you can see the pain all over the body of David Starr. Dave Chris with the upper hand at the moment. Every those strikes are hurting your hands on the, the impact as well. The unprotected aisle way. No! Oh! Dave Chris dropped chest first on a chair. And Zachary Wentz bailing out his mentor. Again, no disqualification. This is uh, as legal as anything. Second, Wench hits Britney strike. Wench is a very adept striker. He can do a lot of damage with his knees. And Wench taking this opportunity with his mentor Hurt to neutralize Star and give Dave Christ an opportunity to get back into this matchup. Dave Christ was victorious in that 104 minute matchup I spoke of a few moments ago, but he's in dire danger of coming out of the losing end here. If he can't adjust, oh! There's a hell of an adjustment, the super kick into the skull of David Starr. And Starr, no shortage of an ego in his own right. He'll proudly refer to himself as dreaming your coffee and your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler. He's got a dozen different nicknames, but none of those matter at this point because it's all about survival. And here in a wrestling the bloodiest wars arena, no matter what your background is, no matter how you prepare, it's an old adage, uh, everybody's got a strategy to get punched in the face. Well, I think everybody's got a strategy to get a chair kicked in your face. And Dave Chris is trying to navigate that table. These are heavy reinforced tables. These are not uh, flimsy contraptions here. These, uh, are meant to withstand a lot of punishment. And Chris had a little trouble negotiating that for a moment based on the damage that had been done to him. He's probably having trouble breathing, probably can't think straight. But Dave Chris now finds himself perched high above with David Starr underneath. Starr adjusts and Dave Chris. Small on the back, kidneys first into the guardrail. You can see no give on that rail. Dave Chris body bounced awkwardly with a sickening thud, and David Starr gonna fly with a suicide dive. Oh, you always gotta be prepared for everything. On wrestling's bloodiest wars, David Starr taking the battle like a projectile, like a missile into these people. You can tell David Starr's taking a lot out of himself as well. Our camera's doing our, our best to follow this. Or excuse me, Dave Chris that was. And Zachary Wentz was checking on him. I think Chris was trying to just get away, to create an opening, to create a breather. There's a cover, false count anywhere, no disqualification. And Dave Chris rebounds. Zachary Wentz following the battle all over this building, and we are packed with fans here tonight. A much anticipated battle. Star with a knife.
Wicked chop and Chris back to one of his own. This is physical. Oh, and Zachary Wentz went to get involved. David Starr, hip to this game by now. Let's get Wentz out of here. They were in the back of this building by now. There was no protection anywhere around them. And Wentz suplexed on that hard floor. This is like a, it's like a deck hockey ring. There's no padding. And Jackie Wentz just got thrown outside. And, and, and David starts locking the door. That's the emergency exit. That leads right into the parking lot. And David Starr has neutralized the biggest nuisance in this matchup. You see the ego of the attitude of David Starr. No stranger to the spotlight, but the time it took David Starr to get rid of Zachary Wentz. Was it enough for Dave Chris to rebound? David Starr may be feeling that same suspicion I am, and he's just gonna ram Dave Chris head and body into these hockey boards. Chris may have had his neck jarred on that impact. He is in a great deal of pain right now. Over the trash can, and Dave Chris is wearing a trash can. <laughs> and it may have been a mistake for Chris to take that trash can off his head because Starr got an unprotected shot right into the side of the jaw. And I'm not sure if David Starr is my favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, but he's the favorite wrestler of this uh, jam-packed crowd here tonight who is watching an absolutely wild altercation. Security and staff scrambling to keep everybody as safe as possible. Saw Chris send it to uh, one of our production tables. Back by the tech here, there are thousands of dollars of equipment near where these men are fighting. This keeps getting more and more dangerous. Chris is... The, well, wait a second. That is the scaffolding that our stationary camera is on, and David Starr is climbing the scaffolding. That scaffolding is six or seven feet off the ground. Again, there's no padding. There's a table below. Dave Prist is now giving chase. Oh, no, 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 no. Side rush and leg sweep, the table absolutely implodes underneath the body weight and the impact of these men. And the force of that impact absolutely shattered the legs of that table. You can see Dave Crist is, is woozy, he's delirious. Covered in dirt, grime, and bruises, and red marks. JT Davidson has never seen a client like this before. David Starr is out of it. This rivalry that was born by competition and just an uh, uh, excellent. Back and forth battles between these athletes has just gotten absolutely ugly and nasty and no better place for it to happen than here in wrestling's bloodiest war. Dave Chris and David Starr back over the guardrail. And I question what either man is capable of now. Do both men have the same idea? David Starr, with that handful of, of, of 
of skewers, barbecue skewers. I think Dave Crest has the same thing. And now I struggle for who will puncture who first. And it looks like Star has penetrated the scalp of Dave Crest. As this rivalry has hit its next level. The realization that Chris has now, oh no, Dave Chris retaliates. He doesn't. He doesn't. A puncture wound in the skull of both these men. They are embedded deep. Oh no! And Dave Chris spikes David Starr on his head, driving those skewers in further. Starr's macerated and nearly defeated. Dave Chris with a very near fall. Looks like Dave Quist got his skewers wedged in deeper than Starr did. That DDT in the end certainly did a, a lot to help matters for Dave Christ as well. Dave Christ has drawn more blood than David Starr has. Bad way. Look out. Oh, Chris went double spring. But it looked like David Starr tripped up Dave Chris and Dave landed hard on the knee. Dave Chris knee on David Starr. Like the proverbial shark sensing blood. Since Dave Chris offered that, he goes right to it. And Dave Chris is struggling. He is fighting with everything he has to get out of the grasp of David Starr because he knows the competitor David Starr is. He knows the amateur background, the ground game that David Starr possesses. He can do some severe damage here. David Starr, uh, almost an inverted death lock, sharpshooter, call it whatever you want. Trying to fish hook Chris as well. But you can see all the pressure is being put on the way the knee is being wrenched of Dave Chris. That's JT Davidson. Davidson with a chair from behind. For the second time in his matchup, the third time if you count the, the aisle way at the, the outset, Dave Chris is being bailed out here. And JT Davidson is more than just a mouthpiece. He's more than just a talker. This guy can be dangerous as well. And David Starr just got drilled with a spine buster. Davidson is willing on Dave Chris. Or perhaps willing on himself. He's not done. I think David Starr says he's done. Davidson, nowhere to go from here that's gonna feel good. Through the table! Another distraction eliminated. David Starr has thrown Wentz into the parking lot, obliterated JT Davidson. Through it all, Dave Chris continues to struggle, and you gotta wonder if there's long-term damage to the knee, and what does David Starr have now? A bucket of some sort, but the bucket's not the story. It's the contents therein, as you see, uh, the blood over top of the hairline and, and, and behind the hairline of Chris from those skewers. But the knee's the story, oh my. David Starr with several hundred thumbtacks. And downstairs on Star. Dave, oh no! Dave Crist wipes out Brittany Blake. David Star went for the the hesitation, German suplex, Dave Chris counters. Oh, he's got the feeling back in the knee and hits the cutter. 
Khabib and Star has been drilled. Did he hit the tags? I'm not sure. But either way, he's able to kick out. David Starr in so much pain that you can sense the appreciation of these fans. Oh, Starr has, he's got thumbtacks in his, in his hands and just throughout his body. He didn't land flush under the tacks. You can see Dave Chris with tacks in his back as well. Those tacks are all over the ring and embedded all over these men's bodies. David Starr is quivering in pain. chair to the back. I think Chris was aiming that chair for there's already several thumbtacks attached to Star. The official trying to help Star pull these out of his body. Oh, you can see how deeply they're wedged in, the cuts they're leaving behind. And meanwhile, Chris with an evil contraption all his own. David Starr's thumbtacks are absolutely coming back to haunt him as Dave Chris pours probably at least a hundred of those tacks onto four wide open solid steel chairs. In his mouth? Are you serious? A moment of defiance and pain as spitting them into the face and shoving them down the throat of David Starr. He could swallow those things. Oh my God. Imagine those thumbtacks just piercing the inside of his mouth, going down his throat, on his tongue. This is sadistic. Is Dave Cook going to hit that? That springboard cutter once again with a knee hold up. Oh. Dave Chris took a, a moment to get his footing and that was all David Starr needed. David Starr begins the, the slow ascension. Chris is back is to, to his own sick contraption. Attempting that cutter again. David Starr knows that could be it. Do everything he can to fight out of things. Here we go. A German suplex. Dave Crest gets planted. This will do it! David Starr victorious! You can see the landing of Dave Crist right on the back of his head and neck. And David Starr, the world travel. The double tough demand that is, is not usually in his element in a wrestling's bloodiest wars environment. David Starr braved the elements. If you want to do the math, all together it was four on one against this man. But David Starr still found a way. Bloody, battered, and with thumbtacks stuck all around in, in, in his body, David Starr was able to find a way to survive OI4K. And David Starr has earned the respect, earned the adulation of these people. This is a battle Neither man will forget anytime soon. They have fought in various locations. They have fought for longer 
than this matchup win. But never in a more brutal and taxing environment as on this program. And through the battle appears to have come respect. David Starr will walk out just barely, but walk out a victorious man. You see the sacrifice. You see what these men were sentenced to here on sentencing day as part of wrestling's greatest war. playground. This is Jonathan Gresham. They call him the octopus because of his proficiency in submission wrestling. He's been all over the world. He's won tournaments and championships in Germany and Japan. Other locations. He's not very beloved here. He's not the prototypical wrestling bloodiest wars athlete. You want to talk about somebody who maybe is athlete who has been dubbed at one time in his career as Chainsaw. This is Joe Gacy, a 10-year veteran, calls himself pro wrestling maniac and brandishing a barbed wire baseball bat. It's hard to disagree with him. Gacy, six feet tall, 250 some odd pounds. This guy is mad, bad, and dangerous to know. And he has been dominant in these types of matches in his career. on his face represents a lot of the inner turmoil and hatred that exists. And you look into the eyes of Joe Gacy, you can see how focused he is for this encounter. And still two more to come on the way. Greg Excellent, 266 pounds. 15-year pro. I believe that's Chrissy Rivera by his side. Greg Excellent, a nonchalant way about him. Almost a relaxed body language. Would not expect that, would not advise it. Shrugging off some of the uh, fans going toilet paper in a disrespectful fashion. We've seen Excellent over the years. Show his fun-loving comedic side. He's seen him a bit more serious. He's going to need to be serious and focused. Survive this environment to be sure. Excellent comes in with a size advantage. But is his frame of mind prepared for the environment he will step in? Again, not what he's most known for, much like Gresham. Probably will be. Maybe, maybe he's out of home, I'm not sure. But you want to talk about somebody who is in his element. The most decorated deathmatch wrestler in the history of the United States. You can talk about your Mick Foley's, your Terry Funk's. Abdul the Butcher, Bruiser Brody, Kevin Sullivan, all the most notorious and feared maniacs and violent wrestlers, the original Sheik, on down the line. 
Nunn have the championship resume and the half dozen deathmatch victories that bulldozer Matt Tremont has under his belt. Tremont has been absolutely indestructible over the years. And I would humbly say no disrespect to anybody else in this match coming in the odds on favor. And as you can see by his right hand, a defending champion as well. Tremont fears no man. I don't think he fears any three either. Defending champion Tremont controls the room. It's Matt Tremont, Greg Exler, Joe Gacy, Jonathan Gresham, four way ultraviolet rules here on Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. Championship on the line. This is going to be Gresham reaching for a cinder block early and decides against it. This is going to be such a, a unique altercation because the stylistic differences. Exler, I believe that was a. Uh, uh, 
plastic ball bat with thumbtacks attached to it. Gacy from the blind side. It's Gacy and Epps with one on one. Those are carpet sticks, I believe. Sharp edges connecting with X, who now says Gacy in. And the flesh being pierced in the early going as Gresham seeks salvation on the floor. Where's Tremont? Contact ball back. Gresham down an opening with Gacy. Gresham has, has the ring out to me. Oh my God, Fremont busted all already. You can see that that bat has done its damage and those tacks are embedded into the skull. I knew Tremont, that, that ball bat had to have done a lot of damage to take Tremont out of play so early as Gacy. Charged with a boot and excellent just continuing to pummel a bulldozer. Gresham into the guard rail. Three and outs are Gresham has won a tournament called Best of the Best. That's all about technical and high-flying wrestling. Not ultra violence. Gresham is a stranger in a strange land here, but if he can adapt and adjust, he can make history as Tremont. Drops Greg excellent foot first on the steel chair. Now team up with the bat. Ow. And that stops excellent dead in his tracks. Second shot. The only thing keeping excellent on his feet is that ring post. And team up now was aggression focusing on the maniac. Ow. And you can see the blood across the back from the carpet tack sticks. The sharp perforations on it, whatever you want to call it. Just penetrating the flesh of Gresham as Gacy trapped in a steel sandwich. Nowhere for Gacy to go. Guardrail hits. Excellent on the skull. This is just absolute madness. Excellent may have severely injured his elbow. And there's a cover on the floor. Gresham trying to pin Gacy, but I want to watch the elbow of Greg Excellent. I'm not sure if it was trying to block that guardrail or something that happened earlier, but he may have an injury as Gacy sends Gresham into the steel. Tremont. Ugh. Continues to wear away at X. I think most of the tacks that were on that batter are bent into the skull of Tremont. Tremont's not able to get the laceration out of Excellent that Excellent got on Tremont, but still doing its damage. Excellent has been out on his feet for quite some time. And Gacy's got a staple gun. Gacy trying to, to drive a staple gun right in the eyes of Gresham. Gresham fight for his life here. He's got the staple gun. And opts against using it. Tremont's got a staple gun. Gacy into the stairs. Tremont, oh no. Staple into the skull of Greg Excellent. And there, you can see the blood is flowing now. That is a piece of toilet paper stapled deep into the skull of Greg Excellent. You can see how deep that laceration goes. And Tremont's not finished. He just literally stapled his ass. Excellent is bleeding badly. That, that, that cut on his head is going to need some attention. 
before this matchup ends, I guarantee you. And Gacy creating some water cooler talk with Jonathan Gresham. To the skull. Greg Excellent is an absolute mess. I don't think he knows where he is. Far away look in the eyes. You can tell his vision is... Uh, oh. And Jonathan Gresham may have a similar fate as Gacy staples Gresham who's trying to pull the staple out of the skull. Tremont senses an opening with Excellent days. I think Tremont's going to Show Gresham a thing or two about ultraviolence. As Gresham is still favoring his head, I don't know if he's got the staple out or not. Excellent still has a, a, a staple in his, his rear end. I'm assuming he's got one in his skull. Excellent can barely stand. Excellent is in a bad way. He has lost a tremendous amount of blood. And Gresham, uh -oh. I think Gresham just knocked Greg Excellent back into reality. Ducks the chair. And there's no way to avoid that shot. Excellent turns things around, but Excellent's got to be racked with pain here. Gresham's got the staple gun in his hand. He slides through the, the carpet sticks. I think one of the sticks caught him in his, in his arm, maybe, on the way out. Gacy and Tremont are fighting. Gacy's getting the better of things on this occasion. Tremont the worst for wear. Gresham is trying to wipe the blood off of him. You can see he's cussing the state. I'm not sure what the hell Greg Excellence is doing. Gacy with a springboard somersault sent on Tremont nowhere to go. Major Featherman his cap if he can be the most decorated deathmatch wrestler in the history of this country. Win this matchup. Gresham has not dropped that staple gun. He's still fighting. He and Gacy and Greg Excellent has found a pane of glass. Oh no. Gacy's been stapled. God, Gacy probably has got his own hair. Staple to his forehead at this point. And Gacy responds and staples Gresham once more. That's two staples for Gresham at least. One for Gacy, at least two for Excellent. I'm not sure if Tremont could staple or not, but you can see a new cut has been opened on the top of Gresham's head. Two separate staple wounds. You got a great shot of thanks to our amazing director, and it's Greg Excellent with a chair shot to the skull of Tremont, or perhaps the back of the skull it was. Both these men are dead. There are carpet sticks behind Excellent, a painted glass behind Tremont. Who's got the thicker skull? Hold at Tremont! Oh, that stick is embedded into the forearm. And just all the weaponry collapsing under the weight of Tremont. Gresham, that cinder block. And the cinder block landed on the hands of Gresham. Gravity may have broken a few of Gresham's fingers. We're not seeing the technical prowess of John of the Gresham here, that's for damn sure. I don't know how Greg Excellent is standing. Tremont is to his feet, Gacy back in the ring. And for the first time, maybe since the very beginning, all four men are in the ring. I 
and they have isolated Gresham. The odd man out, the non-traditional deathmatch competitor, and the man with the loudest mouth and the easiest to offend the rest of the field. And now we're all gonna fight. Gresham with his injured hand couldn't participate, so he was very unceremoniously eliminated in the most violent musical chairs game in the world. Tremont firing away. Jabs for everybody. But Tremont's got a target on him as well. The defending champion. That's now Casey and excellent. Toe-to-toe -to -toe center ring. Water cooler. Oh, you can see the, the hits and neck snap of excellent. And a vicious open head shot for the third. Casey with a flush shot. I think it may have opened up another cut on excellent. It's hard to tell when one cut stops and another starts on Craig Excellent. And now across the back. Greg has found the barbed wire back. Handspring into a cutter, nicely done. That was Gacy's crowd, I think, an excellent grab. And Gacy has it now. Oh, this could be a submission. Has the arms trapped the barbed wire right into the skull. And Gresham saves this matchup for himself. Gresham used the barbar bat, he will. Buries it directly into the spine. Oh, Gacy is stuck. You can see the blood stains forming already on that barbed wire bat from the damage that's been done. And Matt Tremont, is that a bed of nails? A bed of, I don't even know where the hell a bed of, na of nails came from. But Gresham is keeping everybody at bay with his barbed wire bat. Tremont was ready. Oh my god. Tremont looking at the pane of glass. Rusham shatters the glass into a thousand pieces. And you can see the cuts on the head, on the torso, and all throughout the back of Jonathan Gresham, who has never experienced anything like this in his life. Gresham gingerly, carefully, easing to the outside of the ring. Every movement has to hurt as there was glass all over his body. And for a moment, there were three. Fremont defending champion has the bed of nails set up, but Gacy will not go quiet. Casey the end of the nail. Tremont get a sandwich him. Casey out of the way. Tremont impales himself. Casey a chair. Tremont is trapped. The chair wedges the nails in deeper. This could do it. No! Tremont is just instinctively fighting, but he doesn't know where he is. Greg Excellent to his feet, sent on the corner. Caught Gacy, double underhook. Rope assisted Tiger Driver. Gacy planted, could that do it? No! Frustration continuing to set in as the blood continues to be lost. She went daring excellent to hit him. Is that the kiss of death? 
a potential knockout shot for the bulldozer. Tremont's pride may have got the better of him, as you don't ask a 266 pound man to swing a steel chair at. Cinder blocks. Tremont tries to will himself back into battle. But he's perhaps not aware of what Greg Excellent is constructing for him. We are up to six cinder blocks next to one another. Tremont is more vulnerable now than he's been at any point in this match. Oh my god. He's going to drive the skull of Matt Tremont into these cinder blocks. Tremont counters! Excellent spine first! Will this be it? No! And the cinder blocks did not budge an inch. Excellent's body absorbed all the impact as Tremont peppering the open cuts of Excellent with right hands. That's, that's Dan O'Hare. I believe that was Devin Moore as more athletes from wrestling bloodiest wars get involved. And Dream on a cover attempt again. This thing is spiraling out of control rapidly. We got more athletes out here. As one man tries to get involved, another comes out to neutralize them, and hopefully we will have a fight to the finish as Tremont looks to ascend up top. What does Tremont see? Tremont distracted. Are you serious? That's Ian Rotten! A legendary deathmatch pioneer! One of the architects of, of the King of the Deathmatch tournament in this country! Longtime promoter! Part of Bad Breed with Axel Rotten and ECW! One of the originators of the Taipei Deathmatch, Ian Rotten, is on Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. What the hell? And the distraction fresh upsets Trayvon! To the barbed wire table! And Ian Rotten, almost like a, a disapproving father figure, over top of Tremont, who had this thing won, you gotta believe! And it's Gresham and Greg Excellent now. Both have lost a ton of blood. I think Gresham's trying to get away. Gresham realized he's in trouble. His leg is sliced badly from the glass earlier. Here comes Gacy. And Gacy trying to take away the balance from both men. Gresham neutralized. All those cinder blocks are still below. I almost forgot about the cinder blocks ever seen Ian Rotten on this program. Power bomb, power bomb, Greg Excellent. Onto the cinder blocks again, they don't budge, they don't break. Greg Excellent's body violently bounces. And Gresham from behind. It looks like a crime scene here. As Gresham and Inside Cradle, a wrestling move. Jonathan Gresham just won this match with a wrestling move. And Gresham's become champion! I do not believe 
what we have seen here on this installment of Wrestling Claudius Wars, you'd have asked me to put money on the most unlikely man to emerge victorious. I would have given you the name Jonathan Gresham before I'd have given you anybody else's. And I've got all the respect in the world for Gresham as a competitor, a technician, as a purist athlete and competitor uh, in catch catch can pro wrestling. But I did not think Jonathan Gresham would thrive in this environment. I did not think Jonathan Gresham would come out on top over a man who survived the punishment like Greg Exley. A man with the history and reputation of Tremont. A man with the maniacal side of Gacy. Jonathan Gresham just shut up every doubter he's had. And he did it in the most unlikely of ways, an inside cradle, a wrestling hold. Jonathan Gresham has become champion at the expense of three men who the odds would have favored. And Gresham, not a lot of love for these fans, maybe not a lot of love for this company in spite of his claims earlier. And Matt Tremont's face tells the story. Not just seeing Ian Rotten appear, but the conclusion that happened as a result. You gotta respect all four of these men. Might as well have been a death sentence. An ultra violent atmosphere. Sentencing day proved lead to a most unusual set of circumstances and an unpredictable outcome. Here on Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars, I'm Tony Browski. Thank you for joining us.